This has understandably brought some anxiety. For example, my father, age 65, who had normal findings from his two blood tests and a prostate physical examination, he's very keen to undergo a private MRI for peace of mind. Uh, would you advise this? And if so, would a normal MRI be sufficient? Or should this be a multi-parametric MRI? Thanks so much. Okay, so uh, really good question. Uh, you're clearly keeping up on the literature. Um, this question addresses a study that we published very recently from a study called Reimagine. Uh, it had a huge amount of press interest and, well, for two reasons. It was the first time that we offered MRI to the community um, in men that had not had a PSA beforehand. Um, and this was something called a random invitation. So we went to GP practices and men were randomly selected, the play of chance, um, and they were selected. And then we would write to them, do you want to come and have an uh, you know, MRI prostate health check? And that's the first time that we've, we've actually done a representative sample from the community. And we did that to try and work out what the prevalence, so the, in other words, the amount of lesions that were out there um, that, um, that perhaps we hadn't found using existing methods. And so um, the, the study went very well. It started just before COVID stopped and then restarted afterwards, but it, um, it, it, uh, it really recruited very well. Men, men were very, very keen to take part. Um, when they did arrive and had their MRI, and Becky makes this point, it was a short sequence scan. It was a 10 to 15 minute scan rather than a half an hour scan. I'll, I'll explain that a bit more in a minute. Um, uh, they, we did a PSA at the same time. And, and of course, we were able to analyze the MRI result uh, in, in all men, because they'd been invited, uh, men between a certain age band, and, and, and also have knowledge of their PSA. And I think it was the fact that um, over half of the cancers that we identified in that study uh, had a normal PSA. So had a PSA of less than three micrograms per liter, which in the UK is definitely normal. Often four micrograms per liter is used as a cutoff. Um, and, and that was a real surprise. It was a huge surprise for us. Uh, and it was a huge surprise for the world. Um, and of course, this wasn't known beforehand because uh, all MRI biopsies and stuff had always been done on men with a high PSA. So um, if your PSA was normal, uh, you'd just be told it's normal and you, you wouldn't get referred. So we had no idea um, what was happening uh, in the prostates of those men. So this, this really does change things um, and, and does show that um, clearly, well, we know this MRI is an important component of the diagnostic pathway, uh, but actually we may, we may need to offer MRI at much lower levels of PSA. Uh, and I suspect that's probably the answer is to reduce our threshold, make MRI shorter, quicker, cheaper, less harmful, more of that in a second, uh, and therefore we can offer it to more people. So, so to Becky's question, which is, um, can I really trust the PSA? I'm paraphrasing Becky. Uh, I think our study shows that the answer is no. Um, that a low PSA is, 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 not, is no longer uh, assurance that you are free of clinically significant prostate cancer. Um, now, if your PSA is less than one, uh, the likelihood of having clinically significant prostate cancer goes down significantly. So there's probably very little merit in scanning men whose PSA is greater than one. But what I think we're gonna have to do is lower the threshold um, and obviously, if um, Becky's father wants to have an MRI, I'm sure he can get it done. Um, and, 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 and I'm sure that will be part of the pathway uh, in, indeed in the future. Um, now, these, these quick scans are important. Um, the multi-parametric MRI that Becky refers to is the, is the, is the long scan, uh, which typically has three components. Going to get technical now. T2, which is the anatomy, diffusion, which measures the movement of water, and the gadolinium scan or dynamic sequence, which measures the blood supply. And obviously we use each of those sequences to discriminate healthy normal tissue from cancerous tissue. And they all work together. You know, so if they're 
if they're plus on one, plus on the other, plus on the other, it's very likely to be cancer. And any other kind of distribution or plus minus has different um, calcul has different permutations. Um, what we've done for the screening scan is to take away the gadolinium component, the dynamic component. That's the one that takes time, requires an injection. And because you're being injected with gadolinium, you need a doctor present in case you have a reaction to it. That makes it really expensive. If you get rid of that, the scan becomes a 10 minute scan um, and you don't need a doctor present, so you can do it anywhere. You can do it in a supermarket, on a lorry, and the costs just dramatically fall. You don't need to buy gadolinium. Um, and, and importantly, because there's no injection of anything, um, there's, there's, there's no harm done to the individual because it's an entirely passive uh, process. Uh, all the man has to do is lie in the scanner. We don't think that um, the magnetic field is harmful. Uh, you know, fetuses can have an MRI scan. Uh, it may be that injecting gadolinium is harmful. We just don't know yet. So getting rid of that as part of the sequence is really, really important. And if we do ever have screening with MRI, it'll be in this short form um, method, down to 10 minutes and maybe even down to five minutes if, um, if, if some of our sequence development, in other words, we're trying to work on new sequences uh, that can be done even quicker um, and with, with, um, with less infrastructure. Um, and if we do that, more and more men can benefit um, from earlier diagnosis. So I hope that helps your father. So the, my answer to your question is yes. Um, I can't re reassure anybody and, until I've got a normal MRI scan. And I think our data uh, strongly supports that.